Hello everyone, my name is Antonio Bazalo, I'm on the Beach Universal Master Trainer in Spain, and this is my first video in English in my channel. The reason is because we have a very special topic today. We have the first deep review of the new ASUS ProArt monitor, the first one with QD only technology. So this time I'm not only speaking to my Spanish audience, but also to everyone, and of course, it's time to do it in English. So this time, my people, my followers will have um, two versions of this video, one in Spanish and another in English. So, the new ASUS ProArt with QD OLED technology. Check it out. Okay, first it first... Okay, first is first, let's talk about the specifications and, of course, the panel type, the QD OLED. What's the difference between a classical OLED and the new Quantum Dot Display? In conventional OLED TV, we have, uh, we have a white OLED layer, okay, creating the brightness of the display. But after that, the color filter is not only filtering white light into red, green and blue, it's also limiting the brightness. That's our problem. And this is why we have problems achieving maximum brightness with OLED displays comparing with LED. Now, a classical solution is adding a fourth filter, a white filter, for increasing overall brightness. But that's not the only problem. It's not only having a 1000 nits in white. Each primary color has a reference value in nits as well. And yes, it's not possible to achieve with classical OLED. Now, in quantum dot display, the QD layer does not limit the brightness from the blue emitting layer. So, with this new technology, we have a better brightness, not only in, in white, in contrast, but also in color. Now, is that enough for working in HDR? Um, thinking about the rec 2100 specifications, uh, 1000 nits in black and white, etc. Well, we will talk about this later, but first, let's see how this monitor behaves uh, with default settings. What are you looking right now? It's the pre calibration capture with Kalman Ultimate in 709 mode. As you can see, the Delta average for the gamut for primary and secondary colors is really good. 0 0.7. It's under 1. Uh -huh. It's our goal to have an average under 1. So a 0 0.7 is incredibly good. I can say it, uh, it's, it's a bit monitor. I have uh, tested in SDR with these default values. Uh, the coordinates in the gamut are really, really accurate. And if you see the EOTF, it's almost perfect. 1000 nits, 100 nits, sorry, in pure white. And the cure is really, really accurate with at 0 0.7, again, in the average for the delta for uh, this tonal range. Yes, there's some unbalance in this part of the signal, but is less than 1%, so you cannot perceive this difference. I mean, you don't need to calibrate the display in this mode. It's really, really accurate. So maybe we are talking about the best display ever for working in SDR for the price. Now, if we, go, if we move to HDR in HLG, we have also very good results, 0.9, for the tonal range, 0 0.9. So again, under one, the EOTF is well accurate. Okay, again, a bit of unbalance here, but yeah, maybe this time uh, it's interesting to make a calibration for HLG. If you look at these values, okay, and the gamut, especially the red one and the magenta, but you can start working with this. Um, maybe after that, make a calibration. Another situation is with the PQ curve. As you can see, we have higher average value to 1.9. Uh, yeah, it's uh, reaching 2, it's not above 2, but we need to get under 1 values. So we yes, we need a calibration right here. But 
The problem here is the EODF. As you can see, all these values are under the target, okay? And from this one to the pure white, we have mm, a bit more brightness than the target. Um, the worst part here is this first segment. Huh? This is about the 5% of the signal, and yes, right here, it's zero. And that's a pity because we have an OLED display. I mean, we have the best black levels possible with this panel, but we are missing the opportunity because the software by default is not well accurate. So yeah, for PQ mode, we need to calibrate. Uh, at the time of making this review, Kalman Ultimate is not yet updated for um, achieving compatibility with this monitor. So right now we can only calibrate the PQ mode until this result in brightness. 387 approx. Um, we have to wait, of course, for this uh, update, but even with that, you can see how accurate is the EOT wave after calibration. It's really, really, really good. The problem with blacks is solved here, as you can see. So we can expect the same accuracy when we can achieve 1000 nits in calibration with Calma. The gamut is really good. We have 1-1, one, 1-1-5. One, 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 I, I can tell you um, we can get values under 1 with a second calibration. And don't pay attention with this radical unbalance here because if you see the balance is really good until the 60% of the signal, more or less right here, okay? I mean, this part is unbalanced because the software cannot calibrate yet this part of the signal. But again, we can expect this result after this future update um, from people uh, of portrait displays. Now, everything looks really good. QD display, a good factory results, uh, good post calibration values, but there's one more thing. This. When we measure peak luminance with different areas in pure white, the maximum brightness is going down. I mean, when a 1% window, we have 1000 nits, but when we increase the size of the window, the maximum brightness is going down until achieving more or less 250, 260 nits in full screen. Now, we know that because the Flanders display has the same behavior and yes, uh, this ASUS display has the same panel from Samsung uh, than the Flanders display. So, same panel, different price. Now, it's not only that. I made an experiment using this graph, okay? A pure white, 1000 nits, and a 26 nits gray. This is the 18th percent of gray, okay? So, if we make some uh, measurements with a black background, the 3% of the area is more than 1000 nits, but also with the 10% and the 15%. So, you need to go more from 18% for getting a white under 1000 nits and this is a surprise that's really really good it's not only a three percent of the area it's even an 18 percent mm -hmm. uh 20 percent it's this value 25 50 and 100 we have this two uh, 150 and 260. now this is when you have a white area with black background but what happens when you have something different from pure black for example, a middle gray. Now the story is different. Look, this new chart. This column is the white, this column is our gray. With a 3% of white, we have 
two right values, 1000 and 26. Raising this white area from 3 to the 5%, we maintain the 1000 nits, but the gray area is going one nit down. Well, only one nit is not a problem. The problem is that increasing the white area, <laughs> the gray is going down and down and down. Um, more than 18% is achieving less than 1000 nights. For example, for uh, the 50%, it's 321 night nights. And the problem, the real problem here is that in this situation, our gray goes from 26 to 7. With a 75%, our 26 gray goes down to 5 nits. And this is not acceptable. We cannot work in HDR, professional HDR, with this behavior. And it's not only for the QD in Asus. Uh, any QD display has the same problem because it's the nature of this display. So, um, that explains this graph. <laughs> okay. Um, in fact, Asus tell us about this in the overview. Look, this Asus model has a tool called Uniform Brightness. You can activate it or deactivate it. When we have this setting <clears throat> deactivated, if we increase the white area, this white is going down, as you can see. Not only the white, the entire display is going down in brightness. With this function activated, it's maintaining, it's preserving this white value. The problem is this option on works at 250 nits. In the brightness settings for this display, we can have three uh, options, three um, configurations, 1,000, 400, and 250. This is because the BESA True Black is 400 nits. So, working for SDR with this monitor is really, really, really good. It's fantastic. But for HDR, we have a few uh, compromises. And uh, from a point of view, if you're trying to grade HDR in a conservative perspective, I mean, not going beyond 250 nits for white, you can use this display. But if you want to work at 1000 nits, the real specification for HDR right now, you cannot. You need a mini-LED display Asus ProArt for working with real HDR. So, in resume, a great display for working in 709, maybe the best display ever with pure blacks with this uh, OLED technology, uh, a really killer price, uh, about around 1,800 euros, uh, maybe same quantity in, in dollars, of course. About HDR, we still have compromises, we still have problems with, uh, to solve with the OLED technology. Still, the best solution yet is the mini LED display, if you think about the Asus ProArt um, catalog. And maybe this year we have something new about this because there's a new 8K panel coming from Asus uh, with a new generation of inlay display. So let's see what happens this year. But again, this QD OLED display is maybe the top one option this year for working in color correction for 709. Thank you ASOS for um, sending this demo unit. Thank you for the displays for uh, getting this uh, Calm and Ultimate license for making all this calibration, uh, measuring the display. And of course, to all of you for following this review. And of course, we see you in the next one.